Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to St. Pius. for the Eucharistic celebration of the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please turn off your cell phones if you haven't already done so, and stand and greet your neighbor. Good evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring to our mind our sins and ask God mercy and forgiveness so that we may become worthy to offer this sacrifice. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. the highest and the earth is 
Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us, and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast, even now, to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. In those days, the Lord said, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grave that I must go down and see whether or not their actions fully correspond to the cry against them that comes to me. I mean to find out. While Abraham's visitors walked on further toward Sodom, the Lord remained standing before Abraham. Then Abraham drew nearer and said, Will you sweep away the innocent with the guilty? Suppose there were 50 innocent people in the city. Would you wipe out the place rather than spare it for the sake of the 50 innocent people within it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to make the innocent die with the guilty, so that the innocent and the guilty would be treated alike. Should not the judge of all the world act with justice? The Lord replied, if I find 50 innocent people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Abraham spoke up again. See how I am pre presuming to speak to my Lord, though I am but dust and ashes. What if there are five less than 50 innocent people? Will you destroy the whole city because of those five? He answered, I will not destroy it if I find 45 there. But Abraham persisted, saying, What if only forty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, Let not my Lord grow impatient if I go on. What if only thirty are found there? He replied, I will forbear doing it if I can find but thirty there. Still Abraham went on. Since I have thus dared to speak to my Lord, what if there are no more than 20? The Lord answered, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. But he still persisted, please let not my Lord grow angry if I speak up this last time. What if there are at least 10 there? He replied, for the sake of those 10, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of the angels I will sing your praise I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your built 
up strength within me. Lord, on the day I call for help, you answered me. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Though I walk amid distress, you preserve me against the anger of my enemies you praise your hand Lord on the day I call for help you answered me your right hand saves me the Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O oh Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, on the day I call for help, you A reading from the letter from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, you were buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And even when you were dead in transgressions and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he brought you to life along with him, having forgiven us all our transgressions, obliterating the bond against us with its legal claims, which was opposed to us. He also removed it from our midst, nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to the Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. And he said to them, Suppose one of you have a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are in bed already. I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give the visitor the loaves because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. 
Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake, he asks for a fish, or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, how many of you think God answers our prayers? Wonderful. So what are going to be the possible answers? When you pray, God answers. You said you God answers. Almost all of you raise your hands. Wonderful. So what are going to be the possible answers from God? So it's always yes. What are the other options? Could be no. What may be the other option? Let's uh, put them all together as wait. Okay, all the other options under one head, wait. So yes, no, or wait. In your life, you prayed and prayed for something, and then you got a no from God, and after five years, 10 years, 20 years, you were so disappointed because you got a no from God. But after many years, you realized, and you are glad that God gave you a no. would have been something different if God gave you an yes that time, right? Sometimes God won't give you a reply right now. He will ask you to wait. And then after a while you realize the waiting was good. With that in mind, we are entering in to understand this uh, greatest prayer, our Father, the Lord's Prayer. Actually, this prayer is rich in theology. It speaks all about God. It speaks all about what God does. It speaks all about who we are. It's all about our relation with God and us. All together. The first part of the prayer, of course, it speaks about God, right? Our Father in heaven. You know, till that moment... The people of Israel did not want to even use the name of God. Y-H-W-H, Yahweh. They were scared to use the name because they thought if we use the name of God, we won't survive. That's why they used the word Adonai, for example. So they did not even want to use the word because out of respect, from that moment onwards, they are going to say, Our Father, Abba in Aramaic. My father. It's a big change. And then we speak about hallowed be, of course, his name is always hallowed. We don't have to do anything with it. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Of course, our translation, it's not exactly accurate with the Aramaic origin. In Aramaic origin, it should be make your kingdom come. Make your kingdom come. Make your will be done. That's what it is. And then after that, we spoke about God and his work, of course, and then we come to us. It's our own daily bread means our own daily sustenance. Same as the people of Israel, when they were in the desert, they had depended upon God for the manna. Our own sustenance, daily sustenance. And then we come to say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
So how many of you think God will not forgive you unless you forgive others? How many of you think God will not forgive you unless you forgive others? That's not the way it works. God will forgive you because God is not conditional. God does not look at what you do to judge you or to do. God forgives you, but you won't get the forgiveness. You see the difference? God's forgiveness is like the living stream of water. It comes out all the time. But because I am unwilling to forgive others, and I am unwilling to live the forgiveness in my life, I won't receive it. That's the difference. Do you see the difference? It's not that God is not forgiving me, but I don't get it because of I don't give it. I am not willing to forgive others. Lead us not into temptation. Many a time we think, is, do you think God is leading us to temptation? Yeah, if you say the prayer properly, you say, lead us not into temptation, right? Does it sound like that God is leading us to temptation? We're asking God, please God, don't lead me to temptation. That's again a wrong understanding. Basically, it should be like that. Don't make us fall into temptation. Because like Jesus had those temptations, he didn't fail. He faced them courageously with the power of the Holy Spirit, with the power of the Father. That's what we are asking. It's not that God is leading us into temptation, but we are asking God, there are going to be temptations, trials in this life, but give us the grace, give us the courage to face those challenges. Deliver us from evil. That's all about basically the eternal damnation or eternal life. We are asking God to give us eternal life. With all the challenges in this life, we are asking him, give us always life and eternal life. And now the question, based on the first reading and of course the Psalms and the Gospel, the last part of the two uh, stories, can you change God with your prayers? Can you change God with your prayers? Thank you. <laughs> Can you control God with your prayers? Can you manipulate God with your prayers? All the answer is whatever she said, no. But now coming to Abraham, we are asking the question, can you annoy God? <laughs> can you annoy God with your prayers? Keep asking and asking and asking. The answer is no, you cannot. That's the message. Abraham was able to ask, keep asking, keep asking. He did not annoy God because Abraham and God, they were friends. That's the difference. They were friends. Now we come to the gospel passage, the same thing, you know. God is telling us that God is not less loving than your father in, on earth. God is not less loving than your friend on earth. God is not less forgiving than your father on earth or mother on earth. God is not less forgiving than your friend on earth. God is not less understanding than your father or your mother on earth. God is not less understanding than your friend on earth. God is way more than that. So that takes us to understand the whole key we started with, our father. That's the key of all that. Because once when we enter into that understanding that he is my father and Jesus is my brother, and the Holy Spirit is my guide, and then we are one with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, we will have only one prayer. You know what that is? If we know God is truly our Father, if we know Jesus is truly our brother, and if we know Holy Spirit is truly our guide, we will have only one prayer. You know what that is? 
That's the prayer of Mary. The prayer of Jesus in Gethsemane. You know what that is? Let your will be done. You got it? Let your will be done. Because he's my father. Jesus is my brother. The Holy Spirit is one who guides me. Let your will be done. And that prayer will never be failed. Let us proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten or made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified, and he suffered death, and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess when baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. We thank Almighty God for our life and blessings, and we ask Him to give us the grace so that we may continue to be one with Him. For the Pilgrim Church on earth, may God help us to readily forgive others and joyfully seek His kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Oh, hear our prayer. For elected officials and policymakers, <coughs> may God grant them integrity, protecting all who are vulnerable, especially the poor, the elderly, and the unborn. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those trapped in sin or addiction, may God give them faith and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith family, may the Lord's faithfulness help us continue in prayer, trusting God to answer in His time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those caught up in violence, remembering especially the people of Ukraine, that in this time of fear and conflict, they may know God's presence and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died trusting in God's mercy, may he reward them with everlasting life. For this, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of this Mass, which are for the repose of the soul of Wenceslaus Jira, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's offer our own prayers. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin.
pray, brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity, and even fashioned for a ceremony out of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy alone, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dove fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever.
and the Savior's command, and for my divine deeds will be there to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, whose city apostles, peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. I'm Bree Ebers, the DRE, and um, would just like to, uh, on behalf of the Vacation Bible School planning team, remind you all that uh, Vacation Bible School is coming up. It's going to be um, this coming Monday, the 25th through Friday, the 29th. Um, we are meeting from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. each day. Um, and would like to invite anybody who um, isn't already registered to, um, you can either pick up a, a registration sheet in the back here at Mass, or you can also register online. Um, the site to register is on the Facebook event page. Um, I believe it's also been posted on like our general parish Facebook page. Um, I'd also like to welcome anybody who's interested in volunteering to join us. We'll be having a little meeting um, Monday the 25th at 3, just to kind of um, assign roles and things like that. Um, and I would like to invite the whole parish um, to Mass and a barbecue to follow on Friday um, at 6 p.m. So Friday the 29th, um, as sort of our close um, for Vacation Bible School, we will be having Mass and a barbecue. 
um, we'd like you all to come. And um, finally, um, as you all, I think, are, are feeling and are aware, um, inflation is hitting everywhere. And um, with that, the cost of Vacation Bible School has also gone up for us as a parish. So um, throughout this weekend at, after Masses, um, there will be people collecting outside as you leave um, if anybody has um, donations that they'd like to give to go towards Vacation Bible School. We very much welcome those. So thank you very much. Well, I hope all our kids participate in this program and be active uh, all week. The date for Stitch, Pray, and Love is incorrect in the bulletin this week, so it's going to be on Saturday, July 30th. We are still, well, I'm not, he is still working on the sound system, and hopefully we will have it completed by the end of the month. So, yeah. A few more things to be uh, done, but yeah. I am sure you have noticed uh, in the Catholic Missourian that we have to do the October count. We used to have the October count every weekend mass. We used to count, but we are going to change that into an every Sunday count or every holiday of obligation count, which will start the first weekend of uh, August and all the way till the end of next July. Why we do that? Of course, if you read the article, you know the reason. Uh, the reason is we do not have enough priests in the diocese, number one. Number two, we do not have enough pre people coming to church for mass either. Okay. So we had a uh, parish council meeting the other day and we went through several uh, things, but I would like to share with you a couple of things that uh, we have to do. The bishop personally asked me to tell you that we need to make more seating capacity in this church. And he told me, if I move this chair, the pews the other way <coughs> and get rid of that much space, we can add more seating capacity in the church. I checked with some people and Dave Patton, and we, probably we can add some 40 more chairs, 40 more seating uh, if we do that way. In this county, we have only one church, the three masses, and one pastor. Some other counties, we have one priest and three churches. So, if I have a church here that can hold 500 people, and we have only 400 people coming for our three masses, you all know how many mass we need, right? Yes. So, that's where we are going to eventually. Don't think that I'm just making some kind of judgment, but you know, that's a reality that we are facing. And many counties, we have already started that. So uh, we have to think about how we can accommodate more people in this church and possibly share your pastor, could be me or could be whoever it is, share your pastor with another church. Yeah. I don't have any other answers for that, okay? Yeah, it's all up to us. We need more priests, and I have no way of making any priest, okay, other than myself. No, we are not speaking about any of that. We are counting from August 1st, and at the end of July, Bishop will uh, look into the matter, checking our facility and how many people do come, so if he can bring 300 people at for every mass, hey, Dennis, we will make it. So it's, it's that simple, yeah. I also uh, talked to the parish council about the church is, the church should be a, a place of prayer, right? And silence. At the same time, we need to be loud and welcome, right? Yeah. So the back of the church should be loud, warm, and welcome, but this part of the church should be silent and prayer and adoration. When I came, uh, again, don't think I'm judging, it was really loud, so we started the rosary before mass, it helps. But I looked into other options and talked to other priests and uh, to the parish council members as well, and I hope, like in, at Second Heart Church in Columbia, 
if we can have a glass wall in the back of the church, that will help, you know, so that this side is uh, separated. Plus, uh, that we can, the whole area can be used as a cry room as well, because I am making a, a confessional in the cry room, so that space is going to be limited just for maybe a family. So, we talked about these things in the parish council. I just share with you uh, those ideas. And also, we uh, again, several things, but I will share with you eventually, gradually, coming weekends. The other thing is having an automatic lock system for our church, because many a time when I come here, I see the church is open. And I see people walking around. Sometimes it's not a safe thing. the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, all the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. My soul cries out with a joyful shout for the God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You fix your sight on your servant and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west may my name be blessed for the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe like away all tears for the dawn draws near and the world is about to turn. Though I am small, my God, my own, Depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts a crowd to shame, and to those who would pour you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Like the way all tears for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. And the world is about to